Meghan Markle's former boss over at Deal or No Deal is finally responding to Meghan Markle's claim that she was an objectified bimbo, and he's shutting it down. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and yes, ever since that car chase, I've started to look at this couple differently. I really have. And I know this part of this story is going to be a little older, but there's a new update. The boss to Deal or No Deal has finally responded uh, and given a quote about the whole Meghan Markle fiasco. Now, what is this Meghan Markle fiasco? Before we get to the new quote, I want to break this down because I was actually, <laughs> this was all new to me, and I think it's important in establishing Meghan's credibility. Now, I understand why so many of you guys have problems with her because, again, she does seem to over-exaggerate a lot of things. And not only did the boss speak out recently, but a lot of previous models have spoken out, including ones who worked with her during the season. And I want to break it down for you. All right, so for those of you who are unaware, early in her career, Meghan Markle was a briefcase beauty over on the show Deal or No Deal with Howie Mandel, where she opened up the suitcase. Uh, and she spoke about it on her Archetypes podcast, where she expressed her dismay of the experience. Here's the quote that she said. I ended up quitting the show. I was so much more than what was being objectified on the stage. I didn't like feeling forced to be all looks and little substance. Megan. In details, what went on? She, uh, she, there's another quote. Behind the scenes during her latest podcast titled Breaking Down the Bimbo. And there were different stations for having your lashes put on or your extensions put in or the padding in your bra. There was a very cookie cutter idea of precisely what we should look like. I mean... Did you not see the show before you came on? I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm confused. This show features, you know, models in the same outfit. They're holding the briefcases. They're, you know, game show hosts. This is Vanna White's been doing this forever. Are you going to say that Vanna White's a bimbo? I, I feel like Vanna White's a very smart woman. Uh, and uh, yeah, they have beauty stations. I'm sure they have one for Howie too, to, uh, you know, turtle wax his head. I, I, I don't get this. I don't get this. And I'm not the only one who was confused by all this because you weren't forced. You weren't forced. You chose this role. You did it. And uh, if anything, your feelings, which I'm not going to discredit. Sure, you have those feelings are, I think, you uh, projecting, right? Your own insecurities here where that's not what this job was about. And in fact, a lot of uh, the, the boss has come forward and saying, no, he, the show did not objectify. But I want to go back to some of the former Deal or No Deal briefcase beauties who have spoken up against this, particularly starting here with Patricia Cara. Funny, I remember a group of hardworking, strong-minded, independent women that found great success in the entertainment industry and their personal prof professional lives after uh, but what do I know? I only appeared on every episode and knew everyone involved in the show. It's too bad if everyone didn't find happiness or the success they wanted. Uh, but yeah, this was Patricia Care, who has, again, been on every episode of Deal or No Deal, who was responding to Megan's quote that I was treated like a bimbo, objectified on no Deal or No Deal. And a lot of these women were frustrated because they're like, what are you talking about? So here's Claudia uh, Jordan also spoke up. She was briefcase number one and was there during Meghan Markle's tenure as well. Uh, uh, it just didn't happen, she says. She responded and said that these ideas of, of being objectified during the time is not were, were not a thing. Now, Meghan, she said in a rant on her Instagram story, for clarity, yes, getting a modeling gig on a game show isn't necessarily about your intellect. But every show, the executive producers picked five models with the most outgoing and fun personalities to place mics on who they knew would engage with the contestants. So, yeah, some of these models got opportunities. And I remember this show. They would joke and laugh and be part of it with Howie. And, you know, they got to actually talk. They weren't just there objectified. Uh, and she uh, responded further. Um Deal or no deal never treated us like bimbos. All caps, never. We got so many opportunities because of that show, Fremantle and NBC. That's the kind of opportunity that is what you make it. If you just show up and don't engage, then you'll check and not check out, not get much out of it. But if you show up and seize your moments, then there's no limits to what you can do with the opportunity. And I love this quote by her because sure, you could see this opportunity as, oh, I got to stand there and look pretty. Or you could see this opportunity of, oh my God, I'm on a hugely popular network TV show. And every show, someone gets a chance to speak up 
I'm going to make sure I shine and give my chance to speak up and laugh and have fun with Howie and the contestants and enjoy myself, make this a positive experience. Now, clearly she didn't have a positive experience here, uh, but here she is on her story, really hammering this home. I actually enjoyed my experience working on Deal or No Deal. It was a step on the ladder. I've been ascending from my 25 year career that paid my all my bills, put me in front of 13 million plus people a night. It's a lot back then. That was a big deal. We don't, game shows don't get that kind of thing right now. Uh, and let me get going to Celebrity Apprentice, Celebrity Apprentice All-Stars, Breast Cancer Awareness Campaigns, Guest Hosting Extra, Getting Into People Magazine's 100 Most Beautiful People Issue, and so much more. This was really important to her for her in her career. And to sort of call her a bimbo, to say all these women that were next to her are bimbos, is super, super rude of her. Again, she could have felt that way, but you're kind of calling out everybody else you were a co-star with. Oh, I almost forgot. It almost led to my coasting that Miss Universe pageant 2009 with Billy Bosch in front of a billion people, not too shabby for a bimbo. Uh, this is an attack on Megan because Lord knows I've been defending this woman in the media for years and I still will. But I just didn't want any misunderstanding about the climate and environment on No More Deal, Deal or No Deal set. And I'm especially protective of Howie Mandel, who was nothing but kind and respectful to all 26 of us, Jordan concluded. Um so yeah, she appeared on season two, Meghan Markle, right? She there and she left after that in 2006. And uh, while she was grateful for the job, she didn't like being valued only for her looks. Well, maybe that's how you were seeing yourself. You weren't seizing the opportunity, Meghan, as like Claudia and so many others did. Uh, and it wasn't just there. Here's a th another one. There were many, but Donna Feldman also stood up uh, as someone from the season before Meghan. So even we know during her tenure and then even before her tenure, no, uh, it was she was nobody there was treated like a bimbo. And, and again, thankful for her experience. I have read Megan's comments about being treated like a bimbo while working on Deal or No Deal, but I have to disagree on what was being said during my time on the show. Neither myself nor anybody I worked with was ever treated as, as such, in my opinion. However, it's important to note that everyone has their own experiences. I can only speak for mine. Everybody knows what you're signing up for when you're hired as a briefcase beauty. Being hired based off your looks comes with territory. And since Deal or No Deal was one of the biggest shows in NBC, if you're proactive with your career, then you can make the most of it and grow your resume from there, which she did, to be fair. Model continued, although I've received numerous opportunities based off my looks, it's my intellect, my personality, strong work ethic that contributes to me getting hired on a regular basis. Obviously, looks matter in Hollywood. Let's not lie, Megan. Clearly, your looks matter to get you your opportunities, but you got to use that as a opportunity to get in the door. And then exactly like she's saying here, use your intellect, your personality to get discovered beyond that. Of course, there were some things about working on the show that weren't always fantastic, not being allowed to sit down in stilettos because I might wrinkle my dress or having to line up in a row, making sure everyone looked the way they should. But I uh, I also was never a fan of beauty pageants. And that same reason wasn't the best feeling for self-esteem. But you have to remind yourself that you're hired for your presence and your positivity. And it paid off because we would get so much fan mail for people that were always happy seeing our smiling faces on screen. I ran into Howie the earliest week, and I have to say that he's one of the kindest, classiest people I've ever had the pleasure to work with. I'm so thankful for my, my time on Deal or No Deal. The producers had me on a TV commercial during the Olympics. Maxim put me on their most beautiful women list, all thanks to exposure from that show. I booked a TV show as a series regular after my first season on Deal or No Deal. Countless magazines and other 20-year career uh, modeling campaigns, movies, acting, TV show. Uh, and now have my own production company. Uh, it's thanks to experiences like Deal or No Deal. I feel grateful to NBC and all the producers of the show in my time there. I've done so many ads for upscale clients, and now I'm the face of Cadillac's most expensive luxury car. Uh, which is anyway good. It's time for it's up to a woman to decide what experience will empower her, or whether she decides to use as an experience ex excuse to seek attention. I would say I've done well for someone who allegedly hired to be a bimbo. I mean that statement right there. Bravo. Uh, again, this is good advice for all of us. It's up to all of us, not just women. What experience will empower you? Uh, are you going to use that and make the best of it? Or are you going to use it as an excuse to seek attention? Damn. Ouch. <laughs> well, again, what did the boss say? Now, finally, the new update here, again, putting it all full circle, deal or no deal boss was a little bit less, you know, slammy but definitely uh, made it very clear that he did not agree with Megan's partake on a, in the breaking down the bimbo. He talked about the format and et cetera. Uh, but do you agree with Megan Markle's comments that the briefcase models were objectified bimbos? No. 
And we constantly evolved the format so that it wasn't the same for 15 plus years. A lot of work goes into modernizing our formats to ensure they represent our values as a company and wider society. UK version, for example, continues to use members of the public for all for, to open the boxes instead of models. So he's making it very clear. Look, we never did. And yeah, when if at a certain point that model seemed outdated, we adjusted and we've always adjusted and we've always stayed to our values, our core values. And here you have countless models speaking up to go against what Megan's saying to say, no, I never felt that way. Now, Howie Mandel has commented on this. He's defended Megan, but he also was like, you know, I'm, I was the bimbo there. He made sort of a joke about it. I've never really seen him say an honest comment of it, but he's always had the support of the models. They were there to assist him in the show. Um, and uh, he, he feels like they were an integral part of the show as they were. But Megan, if you're unhappy with what you did, you signed up for it. Sure, you can have your experience, but make the best of it. Seems like you did. No, I mean, why are you out there complaining about it? I, I don't get it. And worse off, I thought you're for women. You're supposed to be supporting women, empowering women. Sure, okay, you didn't love the experience. Fine, I'll, I'll give you that. But your comments then hurt all the other women there because you're generalizing them all as if their bimbo is only hired for their looks. And that's not fair to them. Just because you took that gig and you felt that way, which, okay, fine, I'll hear you doesn't mean you should be out there calling out all the other ones to make them feel like they weren't uh, more than that because they felt more than that, Megan. Sorry if you didn't. What do you guys think? Does this surprise you? And again, this is why I, I'm seeing, and I, as I update this story, I realized, man, I, I get it. The credibility here is an, is an issue. And I do believe she was followed by press, I, I, you know, in her career uh, to an extreme degree. And maybe she didn't expect it. I, I'm try, I try to give the benefit of the doubt, but more and more as we see, it's hard to see her as a victim here. I just don't see what she's suffered. Like she has everything. She's had millions of opportunities. Uh, and now she's choosing to lash out and play victim. And I just don't, in a, in a world where people are suffering, true suffering, what, what has she suffered? Like, I really want to know that deserves all the Andy. How dare you speak about her? She can't be criticized. I, 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 what do you think? Before you give me your comment, can you do me a favor? Make sure you are subscribed. Hit that red button. Hit the bell as well so you get notified. When you get notified, smash that like button and uh, always leave a comment. I want to hear what you think. Do you agree, disagree? Thank you guys so much for watching. we got more content for you here. I appreciate you. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. We'll be back with more content here on Popcorn Planet.